Hello YouTube and today we're doing the Astrox 99 review. I know for the last review, which is the Astrox 88 D1, I took like a very very long time to make it and I really apologise for that so this time for the Astrox 99 I worked as fast as I can whilst keeping the quality of the review and also to make sure that I've tested it like fully and thoroughly before I actually review it. Also, I've noticed like a few patterns with like the newer Yonix rackets, they seem to not have extremely drastic changes in all of them and it feels like I'm repeating like the same explanations for the technologies every single time. So, this time for the technologies which I've already explained in the past, I'm just going to make the explanations for them as concise as possible whilst keeping like the important details in them and just for this review I'll focus on mainly what's changed and how it actually plays. So, let me just tell you a bit about this racket first before I go into the actual review part. So, this racket has a stiff shaft, basically the same as the Astrox 88D and also the Astrox 88S. With stiff shafts, you need a strong technique to be able to generate power, but stiff shafts do give you a bit more control because you have more of a like better sense of touch. The frame is made from graphite, NAMD, tungsten and nanometric. The shaft is made from high modulus graphite and NAMD. The recommended string tension for this racket, which is the 3U G5 model, is 21 to 29 pounds of tension. 3U is slightly heavier than 4U model, and most of you guys will actually probably see the 4U model on the market because it's slightly more common than the 3U. But please do be mindful, the 3U weight is very, very similar to the Astrox 88 D1. A lot of people find it maybe a bit too heavy compared to other rackets. So if you rather have a slightly lighter racket or don't have like a strong technique just opt for the 4U edition. This racket is one of the higher end Yonix rackets so it is made in Japan. The lower end ones tends to be made in like China or Taiwan. So this racket uses something called nanometric as I said. Nanometric is basically this material that Yonix has been using for a long time for their top end Yonix rackets and basically it's this lightweight but strong material that kind of replaces like the conventional old traditional carbon. It just allows the racket to be lighter but still retains its kind of power. So this racket has the newer grommet pattern and constructions that most of the newer Yonix racket has. It gives you a bit more string tension retention and a bit more kind of touch and a bit more power due to like a more direct energy transfer. This racket has a solid field core which eliminates miscellaneous vibrations to give you a good touch. It also gives the racket a bit more kind of like a resonating booming sound. Also recently, a lot of people have been telling me when I'm using the racket that the sound of the shot sound amazing and this is probably like the most complimented racket in terms of sound. This racket also has the aero box frame which is different from the dual optimum system found on the duo rackets. The dual optimum system has two different frames, uh, one backhand, one forehand, whereas the aero box frame simply means they combine the shape of like a sharper, faster frame with a kind of blunter, more powerful frame into one kind of solid frame that's the same on both sides. So this means that your racket can be quick and powerful at the same time. So this racket has the newer T-joints just very much like the other high-end Yonix rackets that they've recently produced. It's meant to be a bit more lightweight, a bit stronger and it just gives the racket a bit more kind of like a solid feel. Yonix describes this racket to have a super slim long shaft. Most of the other high-end Yonix rackets also have a very very slim and long shaft. The long size of the shaft gives you a bit more leverage which translates into power. The slimness of it gives you a bit more kind of like an aerodynamic property to the racket and also gives you a bit more kind of like whip for power. This racket has a rotational generator system which is basically the main thing that the Astro series is selling. The rotational generator system basically has three weight points, one at the head, one at the T-joint and one at the bottom. The weight at the bottom of the racket acts as a counterweight to the weights at the top. So when you're holding the racket and you're swinging to do like a smash or overhead shots, you'll still feel like the head heavy feel and get the power from it. But whereas when you're defending, like moving laterally and stuff like that, the counterweight kind of like cancels out the top weights to give you like loads of speed when you're moving sideways. I know Yonix has a way of explaining it with some diagram which like has a pivot point of being in the middle and there's weights attached to the end of it. I just think that explanation is not very very good because who holds a racket in the shaft? So this racket is actually gripped up very very high just like most of my other favourite badminton rackets that I actually use. So right now I can't really show you in hand like the energy boost cap and also like the writing on the side of the cap. However, before I actually put this grip on, I took a couple photos of the racket around that area to kind of show you guys. Oh, and by the way, a lot of you guys are asking like what grip I'm using on my newer rackets and this grip is called the AC102EX. It's the Yonix Super Grab 
Um, it's meant to be like an over grip, I think. However, I really, really like very, very thin grips. So I stripped down the original grip straight to the wood and then I put this very, very thin grip on top. So you, technically you can feel like all the little bumps in the wood and stuff like that. Um, that's just my personal preference. I'm gonna be making like a grip video very, very soon, like explaining why I enjoy this and how it has benefited me and why I actually chose to go this route. So let's talk about the NAMD now. NAMD is probably the biggest factor in the Astrox 99. However, NAMD isn't something very, very new anymore. It's also present in the Astrox 77, the Astrox 88D, and the Astrox 88S. Basically, NAMD graphite is this kind of revolutionary material that Yonix is kind of putting into their rackets to give you a bit more power, give you a bit more control. Um, I don't want to go into like a really in-depth explanation of it because it feels like I'm repeating myself too much in my other reviews. But basically, just to sum up NAMD, it kind of gives you whip but in a very, very controlled way. So even on the Astro 77, although it has a medium flex shaft, it has good whip for power and it's very, very easy to use, but it still is a lot more accurate than a lot of medium flex rackets just because they use NAMD. So you've just heard like what this racket is about and it basically sounds the same as every other Astrox high-end racket out there. So what is actually different? Well, the only kind of big difference with this racket is that it uses NEMD throughout the whole racket. So normally NEMD only exists in the shots of Yonix Astrox rackets and this time they decided to put NEMD even in the frame. So before I actually got my hands onto the Astrox 99, I heard that it was gonna have like a full frame NEMD construction um, I, of course, just made a couple predictions of how it's going to play like. Um, so I know that NAMD gives you a bit more flex. Um, it'll give like a softer feeling because it tends to feel like it collapses a bit more to give you kind of that bounce back feel. I was expecting this racket to maybe have a bit less control because there could be a bit too much flex in the racket. But I was really kind of uncertain of how it will turn out. And just to make it a fair test, I decided to not look at any kind of Yonex promo on any of the technologies of the racket or any other reviews on the uh, market out there already and decided to test this racket out basically blind, just pick it up and just feel out the properties to see what I feel is different. That way I can ensure to give you guys an unbiased judgement of whether this racket is actually worth an upgrade from the Astrox 88s, the 77s or other badminton rackets. So when I first picked up this racket, it feels very very much like the Astrox 88D in hand, especially the 3U version. And like the first session that I played with it, it felt basically the same. There wasn't like a massive difference, but I did notice something right off the bat as soon as I hit. And the thing is, this racket has a softer feel than the Astrox 88D, which I was using previously. So the thing is, a softer feel doesn't mean flex. So let's just reiterate that flex means like, for example, the shaft or the actual frame, it kind of like flexes to snap into the shuttle and give you kind of that whippy power. It's not like that. Feelings of rackets could be different. Some of them are really, really hard and they're like a wooden plank. With this racket, it feels kind of soft and I know it's not because of the strings, because the strings are strung up to 30 pounds of tension. Just like, listen to how tight these are. Yeah, it's very, very tight. So I know it's not because of the strings. So the only reason that this racket has a softer feeling than the Astrox 88D is because it has NEMD in the frame. So upon impact, the racket actually kind of collapses a little bit because the NEMD has this kind of like flex property to give you actually a bit more shuttle hold. So my predictions before this racket having slightly less control were completely wrong so even in the first session i could feel that this racket has a bit more shuttle hold but it's like really when i actually got used to this racket that i could really use the shuttle hold to its kind of advantage like with this racket upon impact it feels like it's kind of doing this you know what i'm saying to kind of hold on to the shuttle before it actually releases and that actually translates to more control and more touch so you can place your shots a bit better it is a lot more precise than the astrox 88s so after testing this racket like quite a lot i went onto the yonix website to see what they're trying to advertise they're trying to say that this racket has more power due to the full NAMD construction and surely enough they said it has more shuttle hold. See the thing is, in terms of like the power factor, I really don't think that this racket has significantly more power or any more power at all than the Astrox 88D. So you might just be like, oh so this racket is just basically an Astrox 88D but 
with a bit more shuttle hold so it's just better in that sense well no because with the Astro 88D it has very 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 good repulsion so it's very very good for doubles like it's very fast so as soon as you kind of touch the shuttle it snaps off and it goes onto the other side of the court really really quickly that's what makes that racket so powerful with this one the shuttle hold feeling kind of makes the power seem like less noticeable um, but I do see the shuttle still going very very fast so yes this racket is still a powerful racket what I actually found is that the Astro 88D is better for doubles because of the repulsion factor whereas this one is actually better for singles because of the shuttle hold for doubles I feel like that this racket it's still usable for doubles because it basically feels like an Astrox 88D in terms of like the weights and the flex. But because of the shuttle hold factor, I do feel like this racket is more suited to like a more controlled kind of singles way of playing. And if you're the type of person to play a lot of doubles, then you might as well opt for the Astrox 88, which has a lot more repulsion. Clears are effortless, but I do feel like the Astrox 88D has a bit more kind of snap and power for the clears. And also, I guess that applies to every other overhead shot as well. Um, like smashes as well. This one doesn't have as much snap as the Astrox 88D. It has more of like a holding feel so you can place your smashes a bit more carefully along the lines for singles for example. Drop shots, I think this racket is very very good for that because you can like kind of feel exactly where the shuttle is going to go a lot better and you can kind of like be more precise with that. Drives is nothing really that special. I do feel like it's not as good as the Astrox 88D and the Astrox 88S in terms of drive because the repulsion factor is minimized. So net shots for this racket is all right. If you hold the energy boost cap, which means like you're shortening your grip, um, it can help to give your racket a bit more speed. But overall, I can say this racket is just kind of sluggish for doubles and I prefer to use it for singles in that case. Backhand is very, very controlled, especially like the downward shot. However, I do find with this racket in terms of upward backhand shots, sometimes it struggles compared to other high-end Yonix rackets. Defense really nothing that special nothing to kind of comment about this racket is a great racket as a whole but is it a good upgrade from like the Astrox 88s or the Astrox 77 well not really I really wouldn't recommend you to spend more money to get this racket if you already have those because those other rackets are also really really good to be honest I would say that if you have the Jersey Strike or like even the Jura 10 maybe the Z Force 2 I don't think you really need to upgrade but this racket does play better than the Z Force 2 because this is newer, implements better technology and it's just a bit more refined. The recommended retail price for this racket is actually quite expensive, just like I predicted before as well. Because for any AMD, like Yonix has been telling us like it's a new revolutionary material, surely it's going to be more expensive. And yes, it turns out to be retail price of £194. That's quite ridiculous. Like I know a lot of you guys can't be spending so much money on a racket especially. And so I recommend you this place to buy racket. It's called Long Tang. They're a Hong Kong based badminton shop that offers international shipping to the world. They only sell genuine products. And the thing is, I recommend them because they sell these products at a much lower price than basically any other place. Like you can get an Astrox 99 for just over hundred pounds, I think, which is like kind of a massive discount compared to 194 pounds. I would recommend you to get this racket if you have like an older model of a racket or you just don't feel satisfied with your current one. But I mean, do check out my other reviews and see actually what suits you because rackets are very, very personal and it's a long-term investment. Oh, I just remembered just before I end this review, I have to quickly talk about my strings. So you guys might have followed my Instagram at poisoncobra.ken or my Snapchat at kencarsaputra where I kind of showcase stuff about my racket. So on the racket here, you can see that I have two strings. A lot of people nowadays are using a new Yonix string called Aerobyte which has a thinner string on a cross string and a thicker string on a main string. Um, the main string also has a bit more grip and overall that combination gives you a lot more repulsion, uh, good power and best of all really good control. So I've been doing my own research in terms of like the way strings play and how different combinations will actually affect playing and I consulted like professional stringers and stuff like that. And this combination I came up with has been working well for me. So for my main string, I used the Ashaway Zymax 68TX. And for my cross string, I used the Ashaway Zymax 62 Fire. I'll be making a video on like how to create your own like hybrid strings in a way that's effective pretty soon. So stay tuned to that. This combination is great. 
I've played with it for a couple weeks now and it's been holding strong. There hasn't been like signs of wear and tear as much as, for example, like the Arrow Bite string, which wears and tears very, very quickly. Also, if you want to stay up to date to the newest Bamton releases, make sure you sign up to Lung Tang's newsletter on their website. It's completely free and I promise they won't spam you with irrelevant stuff. Thank you so much to my Patreons who's been supporting me for so long. They've been donating every month to help me make and improve these videos. Basically, if you click on the link in the description, you can visit my Patreon site where you can donate even as little as $1 a month to kind of support me. And best of all, you guys get the rewards of having personal contact with me. Um, you can have like Skype calls with me, sign letters. I recently sent like merch prototypes to my Patreons. And also like exclusive content such as uh, interviews with top players and also first impression videos for when I get products. Please like, subscribe and tell friends about my channel. Bye bye!